when you hear news about North Korea, what's your first concern? Dr. Eric Foley invites us to think less like Americans and more like citizens of the kingdom of God. Our first love in this situation shouldn't be the U.S., it shouldn't be South Korea, it shouldn't be any of those things. It should be our brothers and sisters in Christ. And how can we show our love for them in, in this moment? Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help, right now on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. This is Todd Nettleton for Voice of the Martyrs Radio. I'm not in the studio in Bartlesville, Oklahoma this week. In fact, I am in London, England, uh, but I'm having the chance to sit down with one of our longtime guests on Voice of the Martyrs Radio, and I'm really an expert on what is happening in North Korea, especially as it relates to the church. Dr. Eric Foley is the head of VOM Korea, our sister office in Seoul, South Korea. He has been our guest before. Dr. Foley, welcome back to Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Always great to be with you, Todd, especially you know, to be able to talk about uh, North Korea when love is in the air, right? <laughs> this is the... This is the season of love. It is the a season of love. I was thinking, you know, I was in Seoul in February, and at that time, the Olympics were just getting ready to start, and there was talk of how soon will America and North Korea be at war? A lot has happened since then, so a lot of things have changed. A lot of things are different. Let's talk first about the changes between North and South Korea, because I know you know, we saw the footage of the two leaders at the DMZ shaking hands and one walked across one way and then the other walked across the other way. And what a momentous day this was. What are the changes and how are things different now than they were, say, even in February when I was there? Well, you know, um, I joke a little bit about love being in the air, but one of the things that's really interesting, Ty, when you hear these kind of conversations, North, North and South Korea talking, North Korea and the U.S. talking, words like love and things like that really are being tossed about as, as being very deep, important things. When people raise the question of, well, how does this relate to Christian persecution? They say, oh, well, we don't have time for that agenda at this point. What we need to focus on is denuclearization. So I think that on the one hand, we would say, okay, if we're going to talk about uh, love and being in love, we ought to remember our first love in the situation shouldn't be the U.S., it shouldn't be South Korea, it shouldn't be any of those things, it should be our brothers and sisters in Christ, and how can we show our love for them in, in this moment? We can't just rely upon politicians to remember our brothers and sisters in prison, and frankly, at this hour, there's not a lot of remembrance going on about them. So people will always ask me, they'll say, how have things changed for, for underground North Korean Christians? I said, it, it really hasn't changed for underground North Korean Christians or for most people in North Korea. Um, these peace talks are, are not at all related to their daily situation. But here's, Todd, where I think the real challenge is, as we look towards the future, is that we have been contacted by the South Korean Ministry of Unification now on several uh, occasions. It sounds, you know, Ministry of Unification sounds like a Christian organization, right? But it's that just referring to the government department of unification. And what they've said to us is they've said, look, this is a key time in the discussion uh, and peacemaking process. A day will come in the future where we can invite you to go to North Korea to be a part of culture sharing exchanges where you can share your message with selected audiences of people and, and share the things that you think are important. But that time is not today. To, today is the time that we all need to get behind the efforts of our government to do something that we all think is important, which is denuclearization. Now, in our view, the problem is, is that that is not what Voice of the Martyrs is about. You know, what Voice of the Martyrs is about is, is that God has raised up a church in North Korea of about 100,000 believers. 30,000 of them are in concentration camps. There's no, no way that we can set aside our concern for them and say, yes, but in the grand scheme of things, let's set them aside because just think of the work we'll be able to do for the gospel uh, by going and presenting uh, to these specially selected audiences. Well, and when I hear you say specially selected audience, what I think of is the, the church buildings that stand in, in Pyongyang now, where you can also go and, and reach a specially selected audience, which means loyal Communist Party members who will nod their heads and smile and take your money and even take a Bible 
that they will then turn in as they walk out the door. So anything that involves specially selected audience is still under the control of the Kim family. Our work is, 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 on the other hand, to say God has raised up a church, and our responsibility is to be one body with that church. And so that hasn't changed. There's no political deal that can be made that entitles us biblically to sever ourselves from the, the body of Christ that God has raised up in North Korea. And so I think it's a very dangerous time where Christians around the world are, are going to, in the future, be invited to participate in these things. And they may be thinking, oh, but just think of the good that can be done for the gospel. But always our first question needs to be, yes, but what about those who are in prison for their faith? And unless whatever we do can be done in the full light of being openly connected with them, uh, we should not participate. And I, I'm, I want to say that very clearly. It doesn't matter how big the evangelism opportunity is. If there's Christians in prison and what's required of us to be able to preach the gospel somewhere in North Korea to approved audiences is to distance ourselves from those people or be quiet about those people, then we should never consider that. That is, doesn't, that there's no justification for that. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Dr. Eric Foley. He is the head of VOM Korea, working uh, in South Korea to reach and to encourage the church inside North Korea. Uh, Eric, one of the things that has happened as a part of this peace process is, and you mentioned the Ministry of Unification will come to you and say, yes, there's going to be some opportunities later, but we need you to do some favors for us now. (laughs) How has that affected your work Because making peace means we don't want to irritate our friends in the North. And what you do, Voice of the Martyrs Korea, irritates them. So how has that affected even your day-to-day operations? These are important questions. And I would tell you that in the 17 years since my wife and I founded Voice of the Martyrs Korea, this was by far the hardest year. So people, as we would travel and do our speaking on behalf of North Korean Christians, they'd say, oh, you must be excited by what's happening in the peace process. But what they didn't always realize is, is that our situation has become so challenging in South Korea because everything we do, uh, as, the, as the South Korean government says, it fouls the air for peace. And so we've always considered that, that everything that we do is non-political because right. everything we do, we don't do human rights, we don't do humanitarian aid. Everything we do is supporting the underground Christians in North Korea to be able to evangelize and do discipleship. But keep in mind that in 2014, the North Korean government responded to the UN annual report related to uh, religious freedom by calling missionaries, what missionaries do, they called it acts of terror. As the South Korean government tries to make peace with North Korea, we become people who are associated with known terrorists, right? Because these are underground believers who, according to the North Korean government, are actively seeking to undermine the government of North Korea. So this year for us to do balloon launching, for us to do the work of, of, through our underground university, which Voice of the Martyrs supports, training up North Koreans to reach North Koreans wherever they're found today. Those are things that we faced active opposition on a daily basis from not only North Korea, not only China, but from our own government in South Korea. And the forecast is that things won't get better, it will get harder. So out of this latest round of so-called peace negotiations came the agreement on what they want to call a no-fly zone, uh, which means that we won't be able to do balloon launching in the area that's close to the border. Um, Now uh, the South Korean legislature is debating a law that would say that if you want to do balloon launching, you have to get permission from the Ministry of Unification. You have to get pre-approval. You know, now every balloon launch we've done for more than 15 years, we always have to notify the police, and we've been very consistent in doing that. But now you have to go through the extra step of going to the Ministry of Unification saying, this is what we want to launch, this is where we want to launch, this is why we want to launch. And they're saying that that the uh, launching of materials by balloon needs to be regulated the same way that any materials going to North Korea by plane, train, or automobile would be regulated. Wow. And so um, the um, people that don't do that are subject to three years in prison and the equivalent of $30,000 in fines. So as we look ahead to the balloon season next year, are we worried about it? Interestingly, no, 
because every year God has found a way to work through every conceivable barrier to make sure that the Bible gets into North Korea. And so um, this year, although it was challenging, I really want all of the people who have prayed for those balloon launches to know that God found a way. We can't talk about it openly because, of course, uh, there's a lot of people listening who would really like to know about uh, that way. But I can tell you that God found a way, and people should keep praying because we're going to keep launching, and we're going to keep reaching out with North Korean missionaries to reach North Koreans wherever they're found because we're not waiting for a future day when the North Korean government presents us with a pre-approved audience. We are doing ministry today. That ministry is continuing at Voice of the Martyrs Korea because of the work of Voice of the Martyrs supporters here in the U.S. It's continuing today. It's more dangerous than it ever has been. The danger doesn't just come from the north. It comes from the south. It comes from the west. But God is finding a way. And how can we Uh, do anything less than keep moving forward because who are we partnered with? We're partnered with North Korean Christians who are going to concentration camps for their faith. So all of us, whether in South Korea or the U.S., it doesn't matter how difficult things get. Now's the hour for us to step up and continue to support the underground Christians in North Korea through all of these initiatives. So I want to encourage all of the listeners, double your prayers, right? Pray for the balloon launches. Pray for the radio broadcast. We, we now have um, to deal with not only jamming, uh, as we consider jamming radio broadcasts, let me just say, it's not only the North Korean government that we're having to think about these days. So um, pray for the radio broadcast, pray for the balloons, pray for the missionaries that are going out every day. We are continuing the ministry. In no way, shape, or form have our activities been reduced. But I would say that our activities have become a whole lot more controversial and a whole lot more difficult. You've mentioned a couple times the Ministry of Unification in South Korea. Is their job to prepare the way for one Korean nation? Is that the policy of the South Korean government, is we want a future where Korea is all one? Or is it more nuanced than that? I would say it's more nuanced. You know, there's not any active political process afoot right now that would talk about making two countries one country. The most far forward proposal would would set up a kind of a federation with two Koreas joined together in a federation as one Korea, but still in, in almost like you think of Hong Kong and mainland China. So the Ministry of Unification is not necessarily trying to unify the two. It's just trying to make sure relationship is good between the two sides of the DMZ. Right, and, and we would say the Ministry of Unification has a very important role, and we recognize that and honor them. You know, we've worked in one way, shape, or form with the Ministry of Unification since we started. So we certainly wouldn't want to criticize them or suggest that their work isn't important. We pray for the government peace process. We certainly don't pray against it, but we pray for real peace, lasting peace, peace that doesn't set aside the day-to-day life of what individual North Koreans are experiencing and only focus on international issues like denuclearization. So when people say, ah, but denuclearization, that's where we need to focus, our response would be to say, no. Where we need to focus is on the basic definition of what it means to be a human in North Korea. And to this day, to this hour, what it means is to be considered loyal and useful to the Kim family. And as we engage, whether as Christians or politically, our advice is that's what we need to focus on, is is that whether you want to talk about the language of human rights, which is, that's of course, that's, that's not our language that we use, but secular organizations can talk that way. But Christian organizations cur- certainly can talk about being created in the image of God and that um, things about being able to eat and being able to, to live a decent life are things that come to us not because we earn them due to our loyalty to the government, but because that's the way that God created us. So I think that the Ministry of Unification and all of the international peace process, let's pray for it. But what we've said to the Ministry of Unification is is that the gospel cannot be controlled by the government. What we preach, who we preach to, where we preach, and when we preach are not things that the government can regulate. You know, um, in, in 15 years of doing balloon launches, we have never created an international incident. I can remember when Kim Jong-il died and we were uh, getting ready to do a launch at that hour uh, where it was announced to the South Korean public. And the South Korean government contacted us and they said, you guys better not launch in South Korea. And interestingly, we were going for a launch in international waters. So I said, you know what, guys, 
fortunately, we have no problem. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But, but the interesting thing, Todd, is what I'm saying is, is that now when, when you hear people talk on the news, they say, oh, you know, this peace process, we have to be extra careful. And what I want to say is we've been through the worst situations, the sinking of the Chunan, the, the, the shelling of Yangpyeong Island, the death of Kim Jong-il, and we've continued everything, whether balloon launching, radio broadcasting, uh, missionary work. The gospel does n is, is not the risk to the peace process. The gospel has never created international discord between countries. And so Christians should not listen to that rhetoric and say, well, yeah, but I understand what you're saying, but for now, you know, you really need to tone it down. I can tell you, Todd, that in, in, in all of the years, the gospel has only contributed to an environment where peace can even be discussed. So as Christians, what we need to continue to do is not reduce things to politics, but we really need to, to remember our brothers and sisters who are in prison. There's 30,000 of them in concentration camps, and we need to remember that the ordinary people of, of North Korea are as important as denuclearization. These are Christian things. These are not political things. And those are the messages that, as Christians, we can continue to remind our neighbors about. We can remind people in our workplace about. We can certainly remind uh, in whatever way we're involved politically, we can share those messages when people ask us. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Dr. Eric Foley. He's the president of VOM Korea. Uh, Dr. Foley, as you have talked about, one of the ways that VOM Korea works is through North Korean defectors. Why is that such a significant strategy and such an effective strategy to get the gospel back into North Korea? Yeah, you know, the people, when they think about the front line of North Korean ministry, often people will say, oh, it's the border between North Korea and China. But 80% um, of North Korean defectors are in regular monthly contact with their relatives inside North Korea. And so we say that the front line of North Korean ministry is those defectors. About 30% of them had some relation to Christianity when they were in North Korea. This is, this is why, by the way, Todd, that balloon launching is so important, it relates to this question. When we started... 17 years ago, the percentage of people in North Korea who had seen a Bible with their own eyes was pretty close to 0%. Now, not by our measures, but by the, the measures of the, the, the government organizations, human rights organizations, that number is more than 8%. That's almost 2 million people have seen a Bible. They're hearing the gospel. Where are they hearing the gospel from? They're hearing it from their relatives. Where are they seeing Bibles from? Balloon launching, but also from North Korean defectors who are being trained by organizations like Voice of the Martyrs to be able to share the gospel with North Koreans wherever they're found, and that includes their relatives. You know, a particular prayer request, you're always great when I come on the program to say, what can we pray for that's needed at this hour? Pray for those 32,000 North Koreans, uh, most of whom are involved in some kind of Christian or church activity, because their standing in South Korea is really precarious now. Right now, when a North Korean comes to South Korea, they're officially a South Korean citizen because the war never ended. Todd, what happens when an end is declared to that war? Well, that changes. And right now, the United Nations doesn't recognize them officially as refugees, and so when there's peace declared between North Korea, South Korea, the U.S., praise God, you know, what an important day that will be. But don't forget that that puts the, the, the status, the citizenship of all of these North Koreans who are in transit. You know, every year we have about 15, 1,600 North Koreans who come to South Korea. My wife and I get to meet all, pretty much all of them every year because we've been doing this work for so long. And so we meet them when they come into country. There's a lot of fear on their part. There's a lot of worry because South Koreans say, why are you coming? You know, we've got this peace process. North Korea is saying, why are you leaving? You know, and so um, their situations are, are they're, they're being thought of as means to an end. And that, that end is uh, when peace is declared, their existence becomes pointless. Now for us, they're the cornerstone that the builders rejected. Who's out there launching balloons with us? Who's preparing the balloons? Who's doing the radio broadcast? Who's going and visiting these people? You know, Voice of the Martyrs is not a missionary organization of Western missionaries. What we are is a platform for North Koreans to do this work. Now, North Korean defectors are one of only several groups, including North Korean underground Christians, North Korean refugees across Asia, Russia, China, Southeast Asia, even the Middle East. But North Korean defectors are a very important part of the work that Voice of the Martyrs does. Pray for these missionaries who uh, their status as this peace process unfolds is, is a real matter of concern. 
what is the greatest need of the church inside North Korea? Those who are believers, you mentioned 100,000 people, 30,000 approximately in concentration camps. What's their greatest need? Let me suggest two things, and I think both of them will surprise you, so uh, they're, they're counterintuitive. The first is, pray for the Lord to strengthen them in their current isolation. I think in all the years we've been doing this work, the North Korean underground Christians are more isolated at this moment than they ever have been. The Chinese church, for the most part, has broken off relations with the North Korean church because, of course, of China's own crackdown, crackdown the, the, yeah. the religious regulations that took effect in February. I think Christians around the world have become so enamored and interested in this peace process that they're thinking about ways to cooperate with organizations that cooperate with the North Korean government to provide food and clothing and medicine. None of that is bad. But if it, if it causes us to forget God's first love, which is the, the underground Christians in North Korea, then it is something that is not good. So pray for them. They are more isolated than I've ever seen them be, and VOM is a lifeline to them in this process. So reaching out to them for the reasons I've shared on this broadcast is harder than it ever has been to. You know, it's harder in North Korea, harder in China, and harder in South Korea. So that's the first request. Pray for them that in their isolation, that Christians around the world might still be able to convey that we are one body in Christ and that they would not feel cut off from that body. Second of all, I don't think we're going to see a change in the human rights situation. I think what we're going to see is a Chinese-style move to capitalism, and many in the West will breathe a sigh of relief and say, ah, well, wherever capitalism goes, the church um, is going to have an easier time. Somebody forgot to tell the Chinese Christians that wow. because, um, this year. yeah, they're in a world of hurt. So what I think is challenging is, is that we've now seen a number of North Korean Christians who, who, who were tortured for Christ inside of North Korea, who when they came to South Korea, uh, most, North Koreans don't, most North Korean Christians don't defect, but a small number do. And when they have, I can tell you this, literally, Todd, every single one of them, their faith has struggled. When they come into a situation of prosperity, they, they feel pressure to work, to make money for their family back in North Korea. They, they get caught up in the things of the world. And so interestingly, what they've said to me is they've said, you know, when we were being beaten, we could withstand that because we had an inner strength. Now it's the inner strength that's being attacked because we're feeling these temptations, temptations to focus on money and, and saying, oh, I have to be the one to provide for my family and relatives and so forth. And so all those things are, of course, true, but Satan has a way of, of working those temptations uh, up inside of us, doesn't he? So pray because I do think economic opportunity is going to come to different groups in North Korea and um, that can be a positive for the church, but our experience is, is that the North Korean church has so far been unable to withstand that as, as we've seen with North Koreans who have come to South Korea. So it's an odd prayer request, but it's something that we're doing now in discipleship of the North Korean underground church is we're trying to help them to be prepared for uh, facing uh, the economic prosperity because unfortunately that is often held up as a kind of a God and it's often held up uh, where you can participate in those things to the degree that you're loyal to the government. So a little bit of the mark of the beast kind of an action going on there, right? Where uh, South Korean Christians giving economic opportunity, that's being mediated to the North Korean people through the North Korean government. North Korean government is saying, yeah, if it is that you participate in the Juche ideology, then you can have access to these things. So this is a whole new set of challenges for North Korean believers. So let's really pray for them in their isolation. Pray for them in their temptation. Pray for them in these uh, mark of the beast moments that they will remain faithful. They're still being beaten externally and I don't see that changing anytime soon. But pray that as a new set of temptations dawns on them, right? This is the, this is the next beast that comes up to face them. Pray that those temptations will not overwhelm them. Dr. Foley, thank you, as always, for being our guest this week. If you're a VOM Radio listener, if you listen on the radio, if you listen on the podcast, however you listen, will you take some time this week to pray specifically for North Korea and pray for the church there, pray for the staff at VOM Korea as they reach out to them, uh, and just answer this call to be a prayer warrior on their behalf in the coming days. Dr. Foley, thank you again for being our guest on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you, Todd. Always good to see you. 
Dr. Eric Foley has been helping us adjust the way we look at North Korea, not from the point of view of one country or one political group, but looking at the situation in North Korea as members of the body of Christ. If you missed any of that interview, you can hear it again at vomradio.net or through the VOM Radio podcast stream. We're going to do the same thing again next week, focusing on another country that could be considered an enemy to a lot of people. But we're going to ask, what is God doing among our brothers and sisters in the Islamic Republic of Iran? That's next week right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.